Hi, I'm Dan Lindstedt and welcome to Defining a Data Lake Part 3. In this part, we're going to talk about what a landing zone is and what a landing zone isn't. You hear this term landing zone a lot when people talk about Hadoop or S3 or data lakes or data swamps. So what exactly is a landing zone? Well, in other words, it's a polite way of saying data dump. It can also be known as a data dump, a data junkyard, a data swamp, a staging area, a persistent staging area, giant historical file store, ingest area, and of course a landing space. What essentially is this thing? Landing zone essentially is a file store. It's one gigantic big file store sitting in HDFS or Hadoop file system, and it's divided up into MPP, at least as far as Hadoop goes. In S3, it's just a gigantic file store. So from that perspective, um, let's take a look at what it contains. It contains raw data. Indeed, it does. Uh, whatever you put in there, uh, whatever file you dump in there is what it has. It contains auditable data as long as you track it back to the source. And this is where some metadata needs to happen. So you need a process that tracks where it got the data and how it copied it in. And it might or might not contain historized data. It depends on whether or not you're running change data capture on the source systems. All right, so what are some of the drawbacks of a landing zone? Uh, because I get asked this question a lot, you know, in terms of what a landing zone is and, and do we need it and all of that. So one of the drawbacks is the data set's not integrated. It's not like a data warehouse. It's just basically a data dump. It also doesn't usually contain CDC or change data capture. In other words, no deltas. If we don't have deltas in there, how do we process it? Well, we're going to have to take the snapshots of the data sets and figure out what the deltas are. And then you still have outer join problems to figure out how to get all those deltas put together again. Uh, usually has a lack of security, although security is getting better. You can add security modules either from third party or from vendors like Mapbar or Hortonworks or you can construct file level security on LDAP and combine multiples. It does store the files in HDFS in a compressed format. So from a compressed format, why is this a drawback? I mean, it's a positive from a storage angle, but why is it a drawback for a landing zone? Because in order to use the data, i.e. in data, uh, data science or algorithms, you have to actually decompress it. You can't use data that's compressed, okay? It's non-indexed, it has no data model whatsoever. Uh, it's just dumped in there and there's no definition. It generally has poor data quality unless you're executing data quality algorithms again on the source system. It's immutable, which means that you load files. These files sit there, you don't update them. There's no real way to update the file in place. You have to replace the entire file. So the bottom line is, is this a data warehouse? And the answer is no. So I just want to talk about this. Now, questions that we have for a data landing zone or for a landing zone include, how do we identify documents, images, video, and audio? How do we extract intelligence from these elements? How do we process deltas, right? Do we need deltas? Well, that's a good question. I think we do, um, but you know, we're going to answer these questions and more in this video series. If you like the way this training looks, uh, definitely come on over to learndatavault.com and check out the online training that we have for you on Data Vault. It includes a lot of this and more. Uh, you can also come to our CDVP2 classes. Uh, we cover these materials in depth for a practitioner level for implementing Data Vault either on a data lake or in a relational or a hybrid solution. I'm Dan Listed. I'll see you next time. Thanks.